Varroa destructor is a mite that jumped from its original host species, the Asian honeybee ape Serrani, to the honeybee apes mellifera, the most valuable insect to human beings. And now, Varroa destructor can be found almost everywhere on the planet. The damage caused by Varroa is undeniable, and many treatments against this pest start to fail, raising concerns about the future health of honeybees and our food security. In this video series, we are trying to understand how Varroa mite causes damage to the honeybees, and the strange relationship between Varroa destructor and deformed wing virus. In our last video, we look what happened in Hawaii when Varroa mite arrived for the first time. A large part of the feral and managed honeybee population collapsed, and we could see the rise of a new strain of deformed wing virus. If you missed the video, I encourage you to pause this video now and watch the first one before continue this one. Link in the description of this video. In this video, we are going to learn that Varroa might have a secret advantage, an unexpected help from another player that damage honeybees. Together, they make Varroa the number one problem in beekeeping today. It is not a comfortable scene to imagine. Varroa enters in a comb cell where a five-day-old honeybee larvae is developing peacefully. Varroa immediately moves underneath the larvae into the larvae food stores and hide there until the worker bees, clueless about the Varroa inside, close the comb cell with wax, leaving behind the larvae, alone, trapped with a huge vampire that will soon start to feed on the pupal fat bodies and hemolymph to complete their biological agenda, to produce more mites. And here is where the things get worse. Because, in contrast with the bee larvae, Varroa, it's not alone. I'm Umberto Bon Cristiani and this is Inside the Hive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and want to know more about them, please consider to subscribe and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. This video series is attempts to understand who is causing the real damage in this story. Is it Varroa parasitizing the bees? Is it the viruses that Varroa transmit? Or is the combination of both that cause the real damage to the honeybees? In our last video, looking at data from researchers working in Hawaii, we saw that honeybees were apparently fine in the presence of many viruses, including deformed wing virus. However, with the arrival of Varroa mite, for some reason, deformed wing virus changed, becoming more powerful. Even though the data shows the before and after Varroa introduction, the rise of a new strain of deformed wing virus did not help us to elucidate our main question. Who is the bad guy here? Varroa, the new virus, or the combination of both? Based on research data from Italy, published on the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science PNAS, the interaction between Varroa and deformed wing virus amplifies the damage because they established a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, meaning they both benefit from each other. Looking at the effect of deformed wing virus on the immune system of honeybees, researchers found something very interesting. Melanization plays important roles in many physiological processes in insects, including wound healing and immunity. When researchers measured the melanization index of a series of honeybee larvae, which is the measurement of how much melanization a single honeybee is able to produce when stimulated, the researchers found an interesting negative correlation with the amount of deformed wing virus present in the same honeybees. Apparently, when you have a higher amount of viruses in the bees' bodies, less melanization capacity was observed, indicating that deformed wing virus could be somehow inhibiting melanization and perhaps other parts of the honeybee immune system. 
The researchers then decide to look deeper into the expression of honeybee immunogenes and find out that those genes were less expressed in bees with higher concentration of the former wing virus, confirming that the former wing virus was indeed affecting the immune system of infected honeybees. However, the most fascinating discovery were yet to come. After a series of experiments incubating varroa and larvae in capsules under laboratory conditions and measuring the former wing virus replication and varroa mite fitness, researchers observed that varroa mites were able to reproduce better when the former wing virus were present in higher quantities. Apparently, the effect the former wing virus had on honeybee immune system was benefiting the mite somehow. One hypothesis was that the bees lacked its capacity to heal, allowing the mice to feed better and reproduce more. This way, a mutualistic symbiotic relationship was established. On one side, we have the varroa mite taking advantage of the compromised immune system of the honeybee caused by the virus replication, allowing the mite to feed more and consequently reproduce more. On the other side, we have the virus that replicates more in the presence of the mites, and because the mites are also reproducing more, the virus can spread more efficiently. Perpetuating a loop of reciprocal stimulation, with escalating negative effect on honeybee immunity and health. These findings clearly indicate that the combination of varroa and deformed wing virus are responsible for the damage to the honeybees. More viruses, more mites, more mites, more viruses. This is a very interesting study, and I just give you a brief overview, and I truly encourage everybody to read it, link in the description. So, should we conclude that the combination of both varroa and the new strain of the former wing virus are the cause of the real damage to the honeybees? Well, not so fast. In order to come to this conclusion, we must know what happens in a situation where we have varroa without the former wing virus which is a very rare scenario. However, Mother Nature has always mysterious ways to teach us new things. But this is the subject of our next video. And for now, I want to take the opportunity to thank all my Patreons for the support. If you want to join us, please visit patreon.com slash insidethehivetv for more information. For now, you can click in one of the thumbnails at the screen to watch more videos in our channel or you can click the logo to subscribe to our channel. Thank you kindly for the view, and I'll see you in the next video, InsideTheHive.tv, the show about bees.